Sometimes love means losing your goddamn fucking mind. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through my TV or for rom com -a and I'm also going to share with you some suggestions, some ideas, some books that I think would fit into some of the prompts. rom com -a starts on Monday at midnight in Berlin time and I genuinely have been waiting for this week pretty much since we said that we were going to do this again. I am being joined by my lovely co-hosts Brie from Fork Wasn't a Book and Michelle from Michelle's Library and we are taking this entire week to just celebrate love, celebrate romance and celebrate our favourite rom-coms. The way that we're going to do that this time is that we are having all of the rom-com-a-thon prompts matching up to some rom-com movies that we have loved, that we have seen and that we think that everybody else loves too. There are seven reading prompts, there are seven self-care prompts, they are all connected to rom-coms in some way, whether they be traditional ones, whether they be ones from Netflix or from Hulu or from Amazon Prime. But if you are like us, if you are a rom-com fan of movies, if you are a rom-com fan of books, then definitely this is the week for you. Because I have lost my mind, I am going to attempt to do seven and seven, and I really say attempt because I don't know if it's something I can achieve. I've got a couple of plans coming up over Valentine's week. I've got a couple of days where I have to be in the office or I've got a couple of days that are very meetings heavy. But to the best of my ability, I am going to try and do seven books in seven days. Is it possible? Who knows? Have I lost my mind? 100%. But let's take a look at what the books that are on my TBR are. For Sweet Home Alabama, we want you to read a second chance romance. And for this one, I am going with You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogle. This is another kind of a second chance for me because I have actually tried to read this before, but I didn't connect with it super well, but I'm going to try it again. I'm going to give it another go and I'm going to see how I get on. Second chance romances don't always work for me, so that might have actually been the problem itself, but I'm really going to persevere. I'm really going to give it a go and I'm really going to see what happens. You Deserve Each Other follows Nick and Naomi who are engaged and they are in the process of planning their wedding but things start to fall apart, the cracks start to show and they are realising that maybe they aren't as well suited for each other, maybe they shouldn't be together, maybe they should call off the wedding. However, Nick's parents have been paying for the entire wedding and both of them come to realise that whoever calls off the wedding is going to be held responsible for all the costs up to now and everything that needs to be still paid. So Nick and Naomi try to sabotage each other into calling the wedding off but with all of their hijinks and with all of their scheming they start to realise that maybe they do care for each other after all. I have got my eyes on other Sarah Hogle books. I know that she has written Twice Shy and that is supposed to be a gorgeous contemporary romance kind of with like a house flipping or a house renovation situation which I love reading. And I've also got a copy of Just Like Magic, which was her Christmas release last year. But I think I want to go back to the start. I think I want to give You Deserve Each Other another chance and see if maybe I can fall back in love too. Next up is Friends of Benefits, where you want to read a friends to lovers romance. And for this, the perfect opportunity to combine two readathons came into my hands. This is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. And it is the second book in the Brown Sister series, but also the February pick for Sister Along, which I am going to be co-hosting with Victoria from What Victoria Read over February. Both of us are going to be reading Danny Brown over the course of February, but I thought there was no better time to read it than during rom com -athon. Danny is far and away my favourite of the Three Brown Sisters. Danny is my favourite book of the Three Brown Sisters. So when Victoria asked me if I would like to host Sister Along with her, there was only one book that I knew I wanted to be part of. Danny is the middle of Three Brown Sisters and she is studying for her PhD at the moment. And one evening while she is in the labs, the building that she is in has a fire drill or catches fire. And she is lifted to safety by Zaf, who is the security guard in the building that she's working in. He rugby lifts her out of the building and everybody is now putting them together online. There are viral pictures of them online. There is the hashtag rugby and everybody is putting them together and saying how great of a couple they would be. So they lean into it. Zaf is a rugby coach and he works with children who come from financially poor areas who are struggling economically. So to bring a little bit more buzz to this charity that he has got and to bring a little more buzz to the team that he is running, Zaf and Danny decide to fake date each other and to boost their popularity a little bit more. But of course, with fake dating always comes real feeling. 
If you've read the Brown Sister books, if you have enjoyed the Brown Sister books, if Danny is one of your favourites like mine, Victoria and I will also be hosting a live show at the beginning of March about Danny Brown. And there are other co-hosts among the entirety of us. They're also going to be reading the other Brown books in the series. So if you've never read them yet, or if you've read them and you've loved them, but you want to discuss them with somebody, now is definitely your time. Next is Dirty Dancing, where you want to read an age gap romance. And for this, I am going with Mistakes Were Made by Meryl Wisner. I think as well, this is a sapphic romance about a young woman who has a one night stand with another older woman that she met in a bar or that she met at a hookup place. And she goes to a friend's house or a future lover's house for Christmas or for Thanksgiving. And it turns out that his mother is the person that she slept with in the bar. Now, I have never read an age gap romance. For me, I kind of tend to associate those with darker romance stories. So I'm kind of interested to see how I'm gonna enjoy this one, but it's got a sapphic vibe to it and I'm a big lover of sapphic romances. So hopefully that is gonna drag me into this story a bit more. Next for Four Weddings and a Funeral is a book that features a wedding and there was nothing that could have come on this other than The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. I read The Wedding Crasher in November of last year and I was completely hooked on it. So I'm gonna give The Worst Best Man a try. I'm gonna see how I get along with it, but I know that Mia Sosa's writing works for me. I know that it is something that I really want to discover a little bit more of. And I think this is the first book of the series, but it's more so a companion novel than an actual series. So this book is following Lena, who is walked out on on her wedding day by her groom, who was kind of convinced by his best man to call the wedding off. However, six months to a year down the line, Lena is working in a marketing firm and she is given the task of working on a project with Matthew, who was best man at said previous wedding. So obviously there's also gonna be kind of an enemies to lovers situation in this book. So if that's something that also works for you, definitely sounds like the book to read. Next up is Love Actually, where we want you to read a dual POV. And for this, I'm fitting in our group book, which is Do I Know You by Emily Wiberly and Austin Siegmund Brocka. This is another second chance romance, but it's also a dual narrative and it is written by two people who are married to each other. So I'm really interested to see how that dynamic is going to go in when you're talking about a couple who can't really stand each other anymore. The couple in this book have been married for years and years, but it's getting to the stage of their relationship where they just feel like roommates who share the same bed, who have a legal contract to bind to each other. But when they're out at a bar one night, the bartender accidentally mistakes them as a couple on their first date. So they decide to lean into it and rediscover the sparks that were there in their earlier relationship by going out on date nights, by making time for each other, by focusing on their relationship, by giving the same attention and the same energy that they would have given at the start of the relationship. I think this is such a wonderful concept for a book. I really love like the early days of your relationship where you're still getting butterflies seeing them or you're still waiting by your phone for them to text you back or you're still waiting for them to call you with what we're gonna do at the weekend. So bringing that kind of excitement and bringing that kind of energy level into an already established relationship, let's see how it goes. For 10 Things I Hate About You, which is going to be a hate to love romance, I am going to read All the Feels by Olivia Dade. This is the third book in a series and as of now, I have actually only read one of them. I have discussed this with Brie and Michelle a couple of days ago about whether or not I should put this on my TBR. And they said, yes, it's a really great book. Yes, I think you're gonna really enjoy it, but do try and read the other books in the series first. And we can't really tell you what they're about because then you'll be spoiled for the other two books that are in the series. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm actually letting myself in for. However, I do know that it has got a hate to love romance in there. And that is kind of all I need to know to take this prompt off. Finally, for Crazy Rich Asians is to read a book that has a POC main character. And for this one, I am going to go with Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye. This is the second book of the Modern Love series. And it follows Katrina and Jazz, who are kind of live tweeted as having just a random interaction at a coffee shop. And when the hashtag Cafe Bay goes viral and Katrina and Jazz are kind of thrown into the limelight, I think that they kind of go on like a fake dating situation, just kind of like take a hint Danny Brown. So if the situations here are gonna be a little bit similar, but I absolutely loved that aspect of Danny Brown, I have got a feeling that I might have my hands on a winner here with this book. That is my TBR. But what about yours? Maybe you don't have yours ready yet. Maybe you are struggling to fit in a couple of prompts. Maybe you have got the perfect book in mind, but you don't know where it's going to fit in. Don't panic. All three of us have got some ideas about what books we think would fit into the categories perfectly, about the books that we think you should pick up for each of the prompts. 
All three of us are taking different prompts. So I'm going to be covering three. Michelle is going to be covering a different three. And Brianna is going to be covering a different three. So if I haven't covered the prompt that you are missing, go and check out their videos too. Because absolutely guaranteed, somebody has got the perfect suggestion for you. The three that I'm going to be covering are Enemies to Lovers, books that feature a wedding, and books that have a POC main character. For Enemies to Lovers, the five books that I think you should put on your TBR are Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall, Written in the Stars by Alexandra Bellaflor, The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon, The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, and Your Place or Mine by Portia McIntosh. For a book that's featuring a wedding, I think you should read The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas, Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto, You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Ogle, The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa, or Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. Finally, for books that feature a POC main character, I think you should read Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma, the Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, The Brown Sister Trilogy by Talia Hibbert, any of the three count, You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria, and The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagadar. Any of those books will fit into any of those prompts perfectly, but like I said, if I haven't covered a prompt that you are missing out on, or if you're still a little bit stuck for other books, go and check out Michelle's video and Bree's video where you will definitely find something to tick the boxes. Those are all of the books that I am going to try and read over the week of Rom Comic Con. Yes, I'm going to try and read all seven of them. No, I probably won't get to them. But the intention is there and it is the thought that counts. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite Rom Com is. But if you'd like to leave a comment and you can't think of anything that you would like to say, then just leave me the film camera emoji. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now. Get on out of here.